guys, welcome to my new and exciting watercolor tutorial series for the absolute beginner. My name is Sarah Dang and I am an experienced watercolor artist. In this video, we're going to cover the materials you need to get started. I'm going to give you my personal recommendations for brushes and paper and paint and the reasons why I recommend these specific supplies. Also, some extra little tips here and there. By the way, I've included some timestamps in the description below in case you want to skip ahead to certain parts. Okay, that's it. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to talk about is brushes. And oh, are there so many brushes in the world. It can be really hard to decide what it is you need as a beginner. Basically, you want a brush that's really soft. This means that it will hold more water and therefore more pigment. The most sought after brushes are ones made from Kalinske or squirrel hair. Honestly, these can be kind of expensive, and while I recommend getting good quality brushes, I don't think you need to get the best of the best right off the bat. For a beginner, I recommend getting brushes with synthetic blends that imitate real hair. If you can afford it, I recommend the Silver Black Velvet series. In my opinion, these brushes are worth the investment. However, a more budget-friendly option would be the Winsor & Newton Cotman series. To start, I would get a size 2 rigor or detail brush and a size 6 round brush. And lastly, I recommend getting a 1 inch flat brush for larger areas. For the purpose of this entire tutorial series, I will be using only these three brushes. Now let's talk about the difference between cheap brushes and quality brushes. As you can see here, quality brushes will hold more water, release paint more evenly, and comes back to a point easily. Cheap brushes, on the other hand, don't hold water very well and can leave unintentional streaks. Cheap brushes are also less durable. Over time, they'll fray or lose bristles. Arguably, more important than brushes is the type of paper you use. There is a wide variety of watercolor papers that cater to the needs of each artist. I encourage you to test out different types of papers because eventually you will have your own preference. But for now, I recommend the Canson XL watercolor paper. This paper gives you a good range in which to experiment with watercolor. And because it's fairly inexpensive, it takes away the pressure of wasting good paper. It's 9 by 12 inches and 140 pound cold press. Don't worry, we'll talk about what that means in just a bit. For now, let's talk about the difference between regular paper and watercolor paper. Regular paper is made with pressed wood pulp, and in a similar process, watercolor paper is made with pressed wood pulp and a blend of cotton fibers or cotton linters. The cotton makes the paper stronger, and thus it can hold more water and more pigment. Paper made from 100% cotton is widely considered the best paper for watercolors. But in my opinion, it's hella expensive and completely unnecessary for a beginner. Watercolor paper comes in three standard weights, light, medium, and heavy. These weights can indicate how thick the paper is and therefore how much water the paper can hold. For a beginner, I suggest using the medium 140 pound 300 GSM. This is the paper that's going to give you the most bang for your buck. It holds more water than the 90 pound and is less expensive than the 300 pound. Finally, there are three types of watercolor paper, rough, cold press, and hot press. For the purposes of these tutorials, we'll be using cold press. It's the most commonly used and preferred type of watercolor paper. If you're interested in learning more about different types of watercolor paper and how you can use them, please visit my other watercolor paper video, which I've linked here. Watercolor paints can come in many forms, including tubes, liquid watercolor, and pans. For this tutorial series, we will be using, and I highly recommend, this pan set, the Winsor & Newton Cotman Watercolors. It includes this cute travel brush, and it has fairly vivid colors that blend easily. Unlike cheaper paints, I love that these are neither chalky nor dull. The icing and cherry on top is how conveniently portable this set is. Simply pack it away in your favorite bag, or tuck it into a pencil case with your favorite brushes, and you're ready to go. 
And finally, the last things you'll need are paper towels and two water jars. The reason you wanna get into the habit of using two water jars is because as you paint, your water will become murky and in turn, it will muddy your colors as you go. Instead of getting up frequently to change your water jar in order to prevent this from happening, you can use two water jars to make your whole life a lot easier. Throughout this tutorial series, I will explain more on how to use this two jar method. But for now, just know you need two jars. And lastly, you'll need some painter's tape or washi tape. Well guys, I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. In my next video, we'll be talking about the watercolor technique, wet on wet. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks and a creative way to use that technique plus a bonus technique. Hit that bell in order to get notified when I make new posts. Thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.